Hi, I'm Jonathan Schein with National Real Estate Investor, and we're at the National Net Lease Investment Conference in Chicago, and we're with Randy Blankstein, president of the Boulder Group, who moderated the institutionalization of the net lease market. Randy, how are you? Good, how are you? Thanks Fine, for, thank you very me. much. So, to start with, regarding this particular panel, what exactly is the institutionalization of the net lease market? Well, what I think you've seen over the last several years is, you know, during the 05 to 07 period, there was a lot of uh, private investors and people in 1031 exchanges who bought net lease properties. Um, and as the, the market softened, to be kind about it, um, a lot of those 1031, people, <laughs> a lot of those 1031 exchange investors um, you know, exist in small numbers today. So what happened during that time frame is there was a need for yield um, as, as interest rates and yields dropped in general. Um, so the REITs were able to expand and, and raise money more easily. And at the same time, uh, the private investors um, had been burned a lot from um, declining values in general from uh, the 05 to 07 period to now. So the, the private investors kind of market share went down. And at the same time, the raising money both from a, a private REIT perspective and from a, a public REIT perspective has increased. So you see more and more institutional um, purchasing and, and ownership of net lease assets. Um, which I think has been a good thing for the market in general. When you say institutions, do you mean public companies? Do you mean pension funds, insurance companies? Um, all of the above, but I think more specifically we're talking about some of the larger REITs like Realty Income and American Realty Capital Trust, and then some of the private REITs like um, Coal and Inland specifically. Okay, and, and, and do you see that as a, having a high impact on the smaller investor? Are they getting squeezed out? Um, they're getting squeezed out, but they're only getting squeezed out on larger properties over $10 million, which they weren't a big buyer of in the first place. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, there was a few high, high net worth people who were in that $10 million plus space, and there's still a few, but they're, it's, a, it's a much smaller percent of the market in that space. But really, for the under $5 million, you're still seeing the majority of people in private and doing 1031 exchange and the individual investor. Um, so not being squeezed out on that, it's, it's, the, it's, a, it's the larger dollar size. Um, that they're being squeezed out in, and because there's so many more buyers in the larger dollar size, it's bringing more people to sell into that market as well. Of uh, people who, you know, the pricing is now much better and more transparent in the, in the larger dollar sizes. Are people starting to recapture their invest original investment? Um, certain things. I mean, if you're looking at compared to the height of the bubble to now, you know, McDonald's ground lease today trades at five, five, four, five to four seven five, which is about 25 basis points better than the height of the bubble. Really? Um, is so that scary? In some ways, it's also a reflection of where interest rates are today. I mean, the of spread course, between interest rates and where that trades is um, still pretty wide historically, but most people think interest rates are historically low as well. Um, so the yields are still there. Um, but yes, it makes some nervous that some of the assets are trading back to valuations, which proved to be once in a lifetime, now twice in a lifetime. Um, but again, you can make a different thing. If you're putting long-term financing, you're not taking financing risk, you've locked in long-term income, and this reduced the risk dramatically, and people are a little bit more sophisticated today and, and on the lending side people are putting down greater volumes so loan to values are a little less so um, people have uh, realized the dangers of high leverage more than they used to. And so, so in, in terms of your panel, what's some of the takeaways? What did you learn from your panel today or your panelists? Um, I think the takeaways is that um, private investors need to spend more time on focused on areas where institutions are not. So I think areas like shorter term leases areas like secondary markets um, and then smaller price points, you know, they can, they can compete very effectively against the institutions. And then when they're thinking about doing larger transactions, um, they need to figure out kind of where their competitive advantage are, whether, whether they're a local buyer or they have their financing ready to go or they're all cash. They need to have, you know, definitive competitive advantages day one to be able to compete with the institutions um, as it gets tougher and tougher to compete against them. And finally, where do you see the net lease market going in the next 12 months, perhaps the next 24 months? Um, it's always obviously greatly dependent on interest rates, which I think are stable, at least 12 months out. And the net lease supply is still going to be challenged because of lack of new development. But I think a lot of people recognize this as a disposition window because there are so many buyers out there, both on an institutional and a private basis, that you'll still see a lot of properties trading and retrading. Um, and you're still going to see a lot of um, loan expirations coming due in the next few years, uh, which is going to bring a lot of product to market. So I don't think we're going to see dramatic changes in cap rates because I think we're at close to yields where um, the, the minimum for now of what people will accept is reasonable. Sure. Um, the new normal? The, the new normal, yes. Yeah. Um, but I think the market is, is pretty healthy now. It's pretty liquid. It's pretty transparent now. 
and I think it, it's pretty much more the same over the next 12 months. After that, I've given up guessing two to three years in advance because I've never been that right. <laughs> okay. With that, I want to thank Randy Blankstein of the Boulder Group for participating in the National Real Estate Investors National Net Lease Investment Conference. Randy, thank you. Thanks for having me.